Free Trade is an app on your phone that lets you buy and sell stocks and exchange traded funds. It also offers an ISA, which is a tax efficient wrapper for your investments, and it's about to roll out its premium account called Alpha. So what are the risks of using this untested platform and what are the benefits? Let's find out in a bit more detail. This is not a recommendation. If you want advice tailored to your specific circumstances, seek independent financial advice. Free Trade is an app that you can download onto your iPhone or onto your Android phone. Currently, there's no web interface. But more than just being an app, it's an investment platform, which means that it lets you find investments, buy and sell those investments, keep those investments safe, and provide reports on their value. The selling point for Free Trade is, as its name suggests, there's no cost for trading. So if you do a basic order for a share or a fund, it's free. If you want to trade immediately and you want to know exactly the price that you're going to trade at, you can pay £1 for an instant order. The basic account is free and if you want a stocks and shares ISA, it's going to be £3 a month starting in July 2019. If you do trade foreign assets, there will be a small surcharge which is added as a percentage of 0.45%. You should always consider how a company makes their money because that will incentivize different types of behavior which may not be in your interest. Free Trade is completely transparent about this. They say that they have a freemium model. This is very much like Spotify in that you don't pay anything up front if you don't want to. But if you want premium features, you pay for an account. They also make some revenue on that one pound charge for instant orders for the impatient traders amongst you. And in the future, their premium accounts are going to be their alpha account, which is coming in the second half of 2019, which should be any moment now, and in their ISA account, which as we saw, will charge £3 a month. That distinction between trading immediately or trading for free when you aggregate your trade with other people at a certain time each day is very similar to Vanguard, where if you buy an exchange traded fund using the live price, you will have to pay a trading fee. But if you're happy for your trade to be aggregated with that of other people, then trading is free. Let's see how that compares with Hargreaves Lansdowne, which is the biggest UK platform by far. On Hargreaves, you have to pay in order to use the platform, and they charge you 0.45% per year on the first quarter of a million if you buy funds, and if you buy shares and exchange traded funds, it's 0.45% per year, capped at £45. If you invest very large amounts, the charge for funds goes down considerably. So on the value between a quarter of a million and a million, it roughly halves, and above a million, it's just 0.1%. But, let's be honest, that's not going to apply to many of us. But what really sets free trade apart from Hargreaves Lansdowne is the cost per trade. And if you do nine trades or less every month, which the vast majority of people will, you'll be charged eleven ninety five per trade. So you could easily rack up very high costs for trading on the Hargreaves Lansdowne platform. One of the discount brokers in the UK, which is iWeb, has no administration charges, but there is a £25 one-off entry fee to open the account. The cost for foreign exchange is much higher than it is with free trade. And the cost per trade is £5. And finally, AJ Bell charges you 0.25% custody charge just to use their platform, and that's for shares and exchange traded funds, and then a tapering platform fee for funds. And for trades, funds cost £1.50 a trade, and for shares, about £10 per trade. And if you trade a lot, which you should try and avoid, that falls to £4.95 a trade. Free Trade's a new company, but it is regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. And here it is on the FCA register. That has really important consequences. Firstly, if you have a complaint, you can go to the Financial Ombudsman Service, and that's if you're not happy with the way Free Trade handled the problem. And in some cases, you may be able to get compensation from the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. But of course, you don't get compensation if your portfolio just loses money. That's part of the risk of investing. And Free Trade is an execution-only platform, which means they don't advise you about what to buy and sell. And most of the compensation comes from people who've been poorly advised about what to buy and sell. But critically, there are some very specific rules about client money, which means that the firm, Free Trade, has to hold their money separate from your money, so that if they go bust, they can't get their hands on your cash. They're now also members of the London Stock Exchange, or an authorised stockbroker. And they put this into techie terms by saying that they want to own this stockbroker stack, because they say that they own the technology stack 
and the stockbroker stack. Now to you and me, a stack is just the technological plumbing that goes on behind the scenes to make the app work. In summer 2019, when I'm recording this video, there are 354 securities that you can buy with free trade. To check out the latest universe of stocks that you can buy and sell, just go to this URL in the bottom right, and that'll give you the latest in a Google document. And I love the fact that they give a little description of each of the different funds in English so that you can know what it is that you're buying. And this list is based on requests from its users. If we break it down by the type of asset which you can buy and sell on free trade, you can see the vast majority are single equities. But we also have some ADRs. These are American depository receipts. So if you want to gamble on the value of some stocks which are held on the US stock exchange, but actually buy foreign stocks which aren't in the US, and that would include Chinese stocks like Alibaba and Baidu, or Taiwan Semiconductor, or the mining company Vale, then you could buy them through these ADRs. But that's a very risky proposition. And the 301 equities that you can buy on the platform, I'd also consider to be a form of gambling. But what's great is they now have 43 exchange traded funds, and those allow you to buy a whole market. And with just a few of these funds, you can have a globally diversified portfolio, and that reduces the overall risk of your investments. I'm always suspicious when I hear that something's free, so let's see what they really mean by that. When you do a free trade on free trade, it's probably handled by the London Stock Exchange. Your trade will be aggregated with that of other people, and then at a certain time of day, they say 4pm, they place the trade either on the LSE order book if it's a very big trade, or they'll contact one of the London Stock Exchange market makers, also called retail service providers, in order to place the trade. Normally the big trades are done by institutional investors. That would be pension funds, hedge funds, or insurance companies. And the trades on free trade probably aren't big enough to go into the LSE order book yet, although that may happen in future. And these are some of the market makers on the London Stock Exchange. You've probably never heard of them, but they're critical for liquidity. In other words, if you want to buy or sell a stock while the market's open, you can always do that because of these market makers. They don't have a choice about whether to trade. They must always offer the ability to buy and sell their list of securities. Although they have no control over when they trade, they control the price at which they trade. So each of them has something like this, which is called an order book. This is the order book for SIBO in the United States, but the principle is exactly the same. The ask price is the price at which you buy stocks, and that's the price which the market maker sells to you. The bid price, which is lower, is the price at which you can sell stocks, and that's the price at which the market maker buys. So the difference between the bid price and the ask price is how the market makers make their money. It's called a spread. Now, if you trade a lot, you'll always be crossing that bid-ask spread and you're guaranteed to lose money. And the less liquid a stock is, the bigger the bid-ask spread. And I like the fact that free trades say they'll never make money from the spread, or even sneakier, bake a commission into the spread. And they're also very honest about how they'll make money with their US trades. They add 0.45% to the spot price, which is the observed price in the currency markets. And as they get bigger and add more execution venues, they should be able to get better FX rates over time. But of course, this isn't free for free trade. They have to pay all sorts of fees. Although the first year of membership for the London Stock Exchange is free, ultimately they'll have to pay this annual subscription. Whenever you see a market price for a particular stock or fund, they had to pay for that with a price feed. And again, that can be very expensive. Once you trade, there's a whole set of processes which have to happen to ensure that the trade was put through properly. Some poor human is going to have to do something called reconciliation, where they look for trade breaks. So for example, if you try to buy 10 Sprocket shares for £23, somebody has to check in a spreadsheet, firstly that it was the right account, that the right number of stocks were traded, that the right security was traded, and that the price was entered correctly. Things inevitably go wrong. And although this should be simple to automate, in practice, it always ends up as some poor person with a very big spreadsheet. 
There are also very strict rules for financial companies. They have to have a compliance department to make sure that their procedures are compliant with what the FCA requires. If that goes wrong, you can get very large fines. So here you can see a million pound fine for interactive brokers in 2018. Mark Stewart from the FCA said that firms have an obligation to ensure that their trading systems are not used for the purpose of financial crime because this exposes you to risks that you didn't bargain for. Very few of us would want to be unwitting participants in something like money laundering. Now let's look at the competition for free trade. Revolut is sort of like an Amazon for financial services in the UK. In August 2018, they announced they were going to provide a free trading platform to go alongside their existing services like their business bank account and their retail bank account. In 2018, Revolut said they had a million customers in the UK. And the former chief technology officer of Free Trade was hired by Revolut to provide this service, which must have come as a blow to Free Trade. New regulation against spread betting or cash for difference products means that these companies have to move into a different line of business, offering less profitable products, such as a free investment platform. Trading 212 and IG are examples of this. So they now offer an ISA and free investing in stocks and ETFs alongside their existing CFD business, which soon may be regulated out of existence. And ESMA, which is the European regulator, now forces Trading212 and IG to calculate what percentage of its clients lose money with CFDs and publish this in the footnote of each page. But personally, I find it rather shocking that they knew quite well that about 80% of their clients were losing money, but only put out this warning when they were forced to by the regulator. And as a result, I might be slightly wary of the ethics of that company. One of the strengths of free trade is its online community. Here's a tweet from Adam Dodds, who's the CEO, showing the distribution of ages for its customers. And as he jokes, millennials do invest. You can see that the most likely age of its customers is 27 years old. And if you want to see how the company works, you can go to one of these free beer events and hear the people who build the technology describe exactly what they do. They even have a separate site called community.freetrade.io where you can log in, ask a question, and they respond very quickly and very honestly about what's going on and also what their plans are with new technology. They actually do listen to their customers, which is clearly the way forward for any financial services company. Part of the benefit of that online community is the ease by which free trade can raise capital through crowdfunding. In June this year, they raised a staggering £1 million in 77 seconds. And in a few minutes, they'd raised £2 million. And in fact, it was so popular that it crashed the crowdfunding website Crowdcube. There are clearly many investors out there who are falling over themselves to provide capital for free trade. And in the latest round, they've raised over £3 million. What are they doing with the capital? Well, they're expanding into Europe. They're also building Free Trade Alpha, which is their premium account, expanding their existing range of stocks and the venues on which they trade, and a really interesting development, which is fractional shares. This is really important for expensive shares because you wouldn't have to buy the full, say, £100 of a single share. You could just buy a fraction of that, which is much more accessible for smaller investors. As with any platform, there are some problems. The obvious one is that it's a very small company which hasn't been around for very long. If you look at its financial statements, you can see it's still making an operational loss as of 2018, and that's likely to continue for some time as it builds out the platform. But what plugged the gap was that cash from crowdfunding. But what you obviously need in the longer term is a steady stream of revenue. I'm also concerned that it seems to be promoting trading rather than investing. What do I mean by that? Well, if you look at the price of a single stock over a day, it's just like flipping a coin. It's almost impossible to predict what will happen to a stock price tomorrow or a week from now or even a year from now. But over the very long term, and here we're talking about decades, stocks tend to drift upwards. And that's investing. You patiently invest your money into the stock market or into bonds and let it grow over time. And in fact, the vast majority of professional investors with huge resources and who live and breathe the markets fail to beat the overall market like the FTSE 100 or the S&P 500 consistently over a long period of time. So if you look at global equity funds, 95% of them underperform a global equity tracker, which is very cheap to buy. 
Now, if these professional fund managers who have huge resources can't beat the market, then why should you be able to? A lot of people starting out an investment think there must be some magic formula in order to beat the market. But guess what? There isn't. And if you can't beat the market, then just buy the market cheaply using a passive fund. That's why I said that the assets which are in blue are simply gambling. Investors are almost guaranteed to underperform the global market over the long term by buying those products. These two global funds that you can buy, VWRL and IWDG, would probably do much better for global equities. Another concern is the ease by which you can trade. A combination of alcohol and a powerful trading platform in your pocket where you just click to trade seems like a toxic combination. The worst I could do as a student was come home with a kebab in my pocket, but if I'd have had this, I could have lost a lot of money very quickly. Free Trade does mention this on their website. They say that overtrading often leads to trying to time the market in the short term, which is very difficult to do, i.e. you can't, and that most day traders lose money. We already saw the case of cash for difference products. And they say that making it so easy to trade incentivizes customers to trade more often than is healthy for their portfolio. They claim the solution for this is their alpha product, which is their premium portfolio product. They say this is going to cost £10 per month or about £100 per year. And presumably they'll also get some risk management tools or portfolio construction tools thrown into the mix. But they do say that they'll never measure their success based on how often customers trade. And their goal is to provide a rich set of analytics to help you understand why your portfolio is underperforming, but also how to build a diversified portfolio. So far, free traders managed to juggle all the balls. But as it scales very rapidly, the question is whether it can keep all these balls in the air without dropping one. A single regulatory fine of the size that we saw earlier could put it out of business. And that has to be a concern for investors. So I probably wouldn't invest in free trade until they're a bit more established, but I do love their approach, particularly the way they embrace their community and also react to what that community tells them they want, which is a great way to run a company. Now, that's exactly the way we approach our community as well here at PensionCraft. We listen to what you say and we'd love you to join us. All you have to do is click on the buttons above and for $5 a month, that's about £5 a month, you can join us on Slack. You can message us anytime you like and ask questions. And also you can join us on the Sunday evening live call. And you get access to all of the previous live calls when you join us on Patreon. So we'd love to see you on those Sunday evening calls. And as always, thank you for listening.